Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am just another tinfoil hat. Welcome to my show. Today, we are going to be discussing the Point Isabel Misty Mystery, or effectively Point Isabel 2.0. Now, again, this occurred in the Point Isabel, Ohio area at a remote farmhouse. And around 10 p.m., the family inside could hear the sound of something hitting something metallic outside the farmhouse. So Larry, his father, and an older relative went to investigate. When they heard this rustling coming from the general area where they had heard the metallic clanging, however, they couldn't see anything. So they went and got a flashlight, trained it on the area where they heard the rustling coming from, and saw a 10-foot tall, 4-foot wide, ape-like monster rising up from the ground and begin walking towards them. Larry claimed that it was covered in kind of tannish fur, it had protruding teeth, pointed ears, and glowing eyes. Now, Larry claimed that he felt when he saw the creature that he was in a trance, though said that this may simply have been due to sheer terror. So when he shone the light on the creature again after it started walking towards them, he said that it dropped out of their line of sight, and a few minutes later they heard it rummaging by the garage again. So at this point, um, the older relative actually wanted to track the creature, so Larry's father gave him a rifle, um, they went back outside, and were looking around for it when they saw it, again, rise up from an open field about 50 feet away. Larry trained the light on the creature, and his relative took aim and fired. He claimed that it was a direct hit, the creature screamed, um, the man took two more shots, and then the creature was surrounded by a white mist, which dissipated over the course of a minute. When they ran over to the area to check for blood or any trace of the strange being, surprise, surprise, nothing was there. So again, this case is really interesting, especially because it occurred in the same area that another really bizarre, vaguely Bigfoot-esque, but also definitely very distinct from other Bigfoot encounters, um, encounter occurred, and that was Mrs. Lister's sighting, again covered in a previous video. Um, in this case, too, you know, you have this vaguely hairy hominid type creature, but they said that, you know, it was very distinct. It had these protruding teeth, pointed ears, you know, possibly something more in line with dogman encounters. Which, speaking of dogman encounters, um, the mist reminds me of something Lindy Godfrey mentioned across some of her works, that bizarre mists are definitely affiliated with these bizarre cryptid encounters. Um, and very often it almost seems like, um, kind of like their escape route or where they come from. You know, these bizarre mists almost appear at these transitional times, whether the creature is vanishing into them or coming out of them out of thin air. So again, that's just a really, really bizarre sort of aspect of this case, where in Mrs. Lister's case, she said that the creature just simply vanished. In this one, it effectively was covered by a mist, which then dissipated, leaving absolutely no trace. The fact, too, that this started with the strange metallic banging noise, um, this is something that's been noticed across the board in paranormal research, especially with poltergeist encounters. A lot of poltergeist encounters um, include bizarre machinery noises or the sound of metal hitting metal, along with other types of manifestations. The same with UFO encounters. There's sort of this machinery type sound which is involved with it, and here we have, you know, for all intents and purposes, a cryptid encounter which also has the metallic banging noise. So here we have, too, yet another case of a bulletproof Bigfoot. Um, yet again, this is just one of so many different encounters where someone fires straight at one of these bizarre beasts and definitely believes that they have hit it. The beast even will respond, even though it doesn't respond by actually appearing wounded. Um, in this case, it did kind of howl or scream, but then after two more shots, again, it just kind of vanished into this mist and left absolutely no trace that it had been injured at all. No blood. Um, I do wonder if the spent bullets were recovered. Not sure about that. But it just really seems to be that these creatures kind of exist at this sort of crossroads of materiality, where, you know, they can affect change, they can rummage through trash or, you know, the underbrush, or they can be completely impervious to bullets. So all in all, it's definitely a strange case. Also very cool that it occurred in the same vicinity um, of another case with a very strange creature. So if you enjoyed this episode on um, Point Isabel 2.0, the Misty Mystery, please like, and if you're new to this field of crop circles, go ahead and subscribe to see what weirdness the future may have in store. Till then, you can keep up with whatever else I might possibly have going on on my free blog on patreon.com slash justanothertinfoilhat. And for today, I am Celia Edgar, signing off. Doing.